Hello and welcome to my new YouTube channel, uh, The Whistleblower. So this channel is all about whistles, high whistles, low whistles, even strange keyed whistles. Um, but the most important thing I would like to start with is the importance of having a good foundation. So a good foundation in breathing, good foundation in technique, and a good foundation in understanding how ornamentation works when you want to include it in your whistle playing. What I found are some really useful and helpful little kind of exercises which will go a long way to help you with having the necessary technique that you will need in able to uh, help your ornamentation and help your whistle playing in general. And the first thing I'd like to start with is breathing. So the most important thing with breathing is to remember to do it. And oftentimes we're so busy playing through a tune and trying to get all the little bits and pieces memorized and remembered and getting your fingers to work properly that sometimes we run out of breath and everyone struggles with breathing. However, if you don't have a firm foundation in how to breathe, yeah, not just in, out, in, out. That's the wrong kind of breathing. What you want to be able to do is to max, maximize your lung capacity so that when you breathe in, it's not a shallow apex breath, but it's a deep diaphragmatic breath. So if you've ever done anything like yoga or any kind of martial arts, or even if you play another kind of woodwind instrument, it applies to all woodwind or even brass instruments, anything you blow down, even singers. They're all taught right from the get-go that breathing is about supporting your breath with your diaphragm. And unless you're used to doing it, it can seem quite strange at first. So I'm going to show you a couple of little exercises to do. So the first exercise, you don't need a whistle. You don't need anything other than your lungs and uh, uh, hopefully not an audience because you will look a little bit weird doing this on the bus. So maybe do this in the privacy of your own home. So first of all, what we're going to do, we're going to take a big breath in and take as much air as you can in quickly. Now you noticed my chest moved. What we want to try and get used to doing is taking a big breath in with your lower diaphragm. So when you're taking that breath in quickly, you don't want to do this. You don't want to move your chest. You want to just keep it nice and steady. And when you breathe in, it's all done through your lower diaphragm. You might have heard this kind of um, breathing referred to as belly breathing. It's the same thing, yeah? Except when you're playing whistle, you only have a certain time uh, in which to take the breath. So it's a good idea to be able to snatch quick breaths when you need to. So this, this kind of, yeah. And so what you want to try and do is the lower part of your abdomen, yeah, is going to come out when you're breathing in and back in again when you breathe out. So quick breath in and out. And so if you put your hands on your stomach there, and when you breathe in, you should feel your stomach pushing out and going back in again when you breathe out. So when you breathe in, stomach is extended. And when you breathe out, your stomach goes back in. And so what I'm doing is, I'm, you can see this, but I'm supporting my stomach with my hands, so out and in and the upper part of your chest shouldn't move at all you don't need to yeah it's it's not the kind of breathing which is um, going to help sustain those long passages so that's the first exercise second exercise is basically you're going to take a breath in and you're going to just sustain that breath and imagine you're whistling 
but you're not making a noise. So we don't have to do this quickly because what we're trying to do is we're trying to build up that diaphragmatic breathing. So you're going to take a slow breath in through your nose. Pierce your lips like you're whistling and just breathe out. And as you're breathing out in a controlled way, you should be able to feel that diaphragm muscle contract again. So you're pushing, everything is controlled from your diaphragm. Yeah, The airspeed, the sound, the tone, even in some cases vibrato is all controlled from this diaphragmatic muscle, this diaphragmatic breathing. So again, we're going to breathe in and out. So that's a really great exercise to get you used to feeling that diaphragm, feeling the contraction, because this is where the center here, just below your solar plexus, your diaphragm, this is where the resistance is coming, where you're pushing your air, not at all from your upper chest, but from lower down. So when you're playing, yeah, here's my whistle. So when I'm holding my whistle, nice and relaxed with a relaxed grip, yeah. So when I'm blowing out, yeah, I'm breathing in and breathing out, breathing in and sustaining a note on the whistle. And again, another good exercise, not hugely interesting, I must say, but a very useful exercise. It's just practicing going from low notes to high notes and high notes to low notes, but using your diaphragm to change the air pressure or the air speed. No tonguing involved at all. Yeah, I'll do a, a separate video on the exercises, but for now, I think it's really useful just to be able to have in mind that when you're breathing in and breathing out, we're doing it in a controlled way and we're using our lungs in a really efficient way so that we breathe in, we're breathing and extending that and breathe out. Our diaphragm is used to control everything. It's the most important central focus with any woodwind player, any singer, any brass player, is your air is controlled, not from your lungs up here, but from your diaphragm from down here. So you will find it much more efficient way to breathe. You'll be able to play longer. You won't have to breathe as often, but also it will help immensely in producing tone and also, should you require it, you can also use your diaphragm to, uh, on certain notes to use for vibrato. In traditional music, we tend not to use diaphragm vibrato. If we're playing something slow or if we want that effect, we tend to use what we call finger vibrato. But occasionally, if you're playing a bottom D or a middle D and you really feel you need to give it a little bit of extra expression, then you can use a little bit of diaphragm vibrato, which is a useful skill to have. Whether you need it or not, it doesn't really matter. But if you can do it and you decide to colour a certain piece or a certain note, there's nothing wrong with using that little bit of extra vibrato, which you can't get from using finger vibrato. So there you have it, an introduction to some br useful breathing techniques, which I've found very useful. And over the years, and I've been teaching uh, woodwind now and whistle for probably about 30 years. And I've always found it a really useful foundation skill before we learn any tunes or before we learn anything about ornamentation is to help understand the importance of being able to control your breathing and use your lungs in a much more efficient way. So once again, just to recap, when we're breathing in, we don't want to be moving our shoulders or our chest. There shouldn't be any upper body movement at all. It's all done from your lower body, yeah? From your diaphragm, and when you breathe in, and out. We're breathing quickly. Out. In. Out. Thanks, I hope you found that helpful and um, I'll be putting up another video uh, explaining a little bit more about breathing and also explaining about some exercises which you can do on your whistle to help um, 
encourage that diaphragmatic breathing and also help to sustain your notes and your capacity uh, for a bit longer than you're maybe doing at the moment. Okay, bye for now.